of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. But they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a period of time, the synagogue of Satan was successful at inserting the serpent seed into the Most High's creation. The way the high-level workers of iniquity accomplished passing off the tares as the default to all nations by rewriting history and conquering every land in this world. Now that the awakening is here, the truth being revealed is restoring history. The alterations done to history by the synagogue of Satan is being exposed by the truth. Also, the knowledge of the indigenous black people are increasing. The workers of iniquity in the beast system indoctrinated the indigenous black people that the only way they will be free is through some sort of religious faith. The gods of the heathens will save them and set them free from bondage. The scripture said, the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Whomever the Most High set free is free indeed. No religious faith is going to save you. The truth of the word of the Most High will make you free as well as sanctify you. In order to understand how the terrorists became the foundation to all nations, also how the Khazars became Israeli and Jewish, we have to go back to the Tower of Babel. A lot of black people believe the black race only existed in Africa. The synagogue of Satan convinced the world that black people are the foundation to African countries only. That is false. Black people are the foundation to every single land on this earth. Life started for Adam and Eve in paradise. Most people know paradise as the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve are the only creation of the Most High, born or created in paradise. Adam and Eve's children were born outside of paradise or the Garden of Eden. Israelites, it is important for you to know that paradise was a place located in Eden. Once Adam and Eve were kicked out of paradise, they enter into what the scriptures call strange land. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones, large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them, and they were as dead. Because whereas they had hitherto been in the garden land, beautifully planted with all manners of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land, which they knew not and had never seen. To learn more about Paradise and Eden, watch the tales of Adam and Eve, part 1 to 3. Life began for the original people in Eden or the continent of Africa. The Most High preserved Noah and his family to repopulate the earth after the flood. Once the descendants of the three bloodlines, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, began to increase, Shem, Ham, and Japheth distribute all the land on this earth according to the ways the Most High instructed Noah. Land distribution began in the days of Peleg. And in the sixth year thereof, she bare him a son and called his name Peleg. For in the days when he was born, the children of Noah began to divide the earth amongst themselves. For this reason he called his name Peleg, and they divided it secretly amongst themselves and told it to Noah. And it came to pass in the beginning of the 33rd Jubilee that they divided the earth into three parts for Shem and Ham and Japheth, according to the inheritance of each in the first year, in the first week, when one of us who had been sent was with them. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh to him, they and their children, and he divided the earth into the lots which his three sons were to take in possession. And they reached forth their hands and took the writing out of the bosom of Noah their father. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, 
for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Once the original black people began to multiply on the earth, the scripture said the people had one language. During the reign of Nimrod, the people wanted to build a city that could reach the heavens. All of this was taking place on the continent of Africa. It was during the time of Babel, the Most High scattered the original people into all the lands in this earth. The reason it was sin for the children of Ham to build the Tower of Babel, they imagined in their heart to build a tower that could reach heaven to war with the Most High. And the Lord descended, and we descended with him to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. And he confounded their language, and they no longer understood one another's speech, and they ceased then to build the city and the tower. For this reason, the whole land of Shinar is called Babel, because the Lord did there confound all the language of the children of men, and from thence they were dispersed into their cities, each according to his language and his nation. And the Lord sent a mighty wind against the tower and overthrew it upon the earth. And behold, it was between Ashar and Babylon in the land of Shinar, and they called its name Overthrow. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together, Foot, Mizraim, Cush, and Canaan with their families. And they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and in it a strong tower, and its top reaching heaven. And we will make ourselves fame, so that we may reign upon the whole world, in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us that we may reign mightily over them, and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. And the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin. And they began to build it, and while they were building against the Lord God of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him and to ascend into heaven. And the Lord knew their thoughts, and it came to pass when they were building, they cast the arrows towards the heavens, and all the arrows fell upon them filled with blood. And when they saw them, they said to each other, Surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. For this was from the Lord in order to cause them to err, and in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. When the Most High confused their languages, and they stopped building the tower, the men who said they would ascend into heaven to fight against the Most High, the Most High scattered them throughout the earth. Everyone who spoke the same language went their separate ways. According to the book of Jasher, the Most High overthrew the Tower of Babel. And the Lord smote the three divisions that were there, and he punished them according to their works and designs. Those who said, we will ascend to heaven and serve our gods, became like apes and elephants. And those who said, We will smite the heavens with arrows, the Lord killed them, one man through the hand of his neighbor. And the third division of those who said, We will ascend to heaven and fight against him, the Lord scattered them throughout the earth. And as to the tower which the sons of men built, the earth opened its mouth and swaddled up one third part thereof. And a fire also descended from heaven and burned another third. And the other third is left to this day. And it is of that part which was aloft. And it circumference its three days walk. And when the Lord has scattered the sons of men on account of their sin at the tower, behold, they spread forth into many divisions. And all the sons of men were dispersed into the four corners of the earth. And all the families became each according to its language, its land, or its city. The scriptures made it clear that the Most High scattered the original people all over the world, mostly the children of Ham. We all know the Hamites are what the beast system labeled black people. With the synagogue of Satan repeating the lie of black people only belonging to Africa is one of the many deceptions disabling the people today. Black people are the foundation to all land, nations, and bloodlines. The beast system defined nation as a large body of people united by common decent, history, culture, or language inhabiting a particular country. Another definition found in the beast culture is a territory where all the people are led by the same government. The word nation in the scriptures is different from what the heathens definition of a nation. 
When you think about a nation, most people think about all the countries in this world. For example, United States, France, Brazil, South Africa, and Japan are considered nations in the beast culture. When the scriptures say nation, the scriptures mean a bloodline. A bloodline is a family clan. The Most High view everyone by their bloodline. A bloodline is not a variety of people coming together in a country under the same government. For example, the USA have people from many different bloodlines identifying themselves as Americans. You will not find Americans in the scripture. Land in the scriptures are identified by a bloodline. The promised land given to the Israelites is called the land of Canaan. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Who is Canaan? Canaan is the son of Ham and Noah's grandson. The indigenous black people always call their land after their names. This is a tradition they learned from their creator who called his people by his name, as well as sent his messengers, the angels, by his name. The synagogue of Satan renamed all the land on this earth to establish the tares. You will not find Europe in the scriptures. The land of the north, as well as all the islands of the Gentiles, are named after Japheth and his sons. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Taras. You will find Japheth and his children in the scriptures. You will not find the modern countries and people living in Japheth territories in the scriptures. All of Japheth's children are indigenous black people. The modern people claiming Europe and the culture of Europe are the tares. The tares also try to keep the culture of the indigenous black people that live there to establish themselves. The modern people living and controlling all the land in this earth have no rights or claim to the land. The indigenous black people were pushed out of their land. The tares took over and claimed their legacy, history, and culture. Today, the uneducated tares will fight and say they are the original people of the land and they are not but liars, just like their fathers. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The tares believe being born on the land give them rights. In addition, they believe they are the descendants of the foundational indigenous black people that live and possess the land. The tares cannot comprehend that their beginnings come from colonization. Prior to colonization, they did not exist. Israelites, you have to stop giving the tares, Esau, as well as other indigenous black people's identity and culture. Just because a person is born in a country, it doesn't mean the person descend from the foundational black people who built the culture of that land. I will use the tribe of Judah as an example. The tribe of Judah in this generation are in captivity, as well as all the other tribes. All the children being born that are descendants of the tribe of Judah are from the four corners of this world. They speak the language of the country they were born in. Regardless of the country they are born in, they will be Israelites from the tribe of Judah. The country they were born in doesn't matter. Their bloodline matter. There are many people being born in the United States. Can these people claim the foundational natives who possess the land first, culture and identity? Can Americans call themselves Indians because they were born in the USA? No. Likewise, the tares, the children of the colonizers, cannot claim the foundational black people's culture and legacy simply because they were born on the land. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The bloodline of the tares revealed they are a new species, a mixed people. Some tares are aware that they are not of black people's heritage. That is why they try to distance themselves from their indigenous black grandmother or father. 
They know by the third and fourth generation, they accomplished their mission of erasing their black roots. Israelites, I hope you understand the difference between the language of the B system and the most High's language. Bloodline is solid. Bloodline can tell you where you came from and your inheritance, regardless of where you were born in this world. If you descend from Shem's bloodline, you can live anywhere in this world and will continue to be a Shemite. According to the synagogue of Satan, if you're born on the land, you identify with the country and culture that is practiced on the land. The workers of iniquity dispersed the indigenous black people from the land they stole during colonization and kept the indigenous black people's culture, history, and legacy. The land of Mizraim will forever be the greatest example of tares claiming history and culture that don't belong to them. They say they are not black, but claim the ancient people's culture whose land they live on. Ham's son Mizraim is black, just like his father, regardless if the tares like it or not. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. I agree with the tares. You're not black. Stop claiming black culture and legacy. You're a modern people who have no lineage to the foundational black people. Many of you make sure to erase any gene that comes from the indigenous black people. Please continue to erase black people's DNA from yours. Before there was a race called white, black people was here long before the first Nephilim or Neanderthal was born. The watchers had to procreate with black women to create the serpent seed. Before colonization, every land on this earth was inhabited by black people, including the region the beast system labeled Europe. Israelites, it is important for you to understand this truth. The continent of Africa, or Eden, is the foundation to the most highest creation of the species of people made in his image and likeness. The most high did not limit his people to Africa. The Most High distributed all the land on this earth to Noah's sons and their descendants. The Book of Jubilee reveals Shem inherited the middle of the earth. Japheth inherited the northern regions of this world. Ham inherited the southern regions of this world. And there came forth on the writing as Shem's lot, the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generations of eternity. This is the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations forever. Five great islands and a great land in the north, but it is cold and the land of Ham is hot and the land of Shem is neither hot nor cold, but it is of a blended cold and heat. The Most High made it clear of where each bloodline would dwell. The modern government and the Satans don't have the final say. The synagogue of Satan disregard the way the Most High distributed the land on the earth. They parted Africa into two major parts, North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. They pushed majority of the foundational black people from North Africa to Sub-Saharan Africa. The few that remain, the colonizers whited them out to create the tares in North Africa. The Most High would never divide his land by skin color. All of the people made in the image of the Most High are dark indigenous black people. The Most High does not rely on appearance to distribute land, nor determine who live in North Africa. The Most High distribute the land based on bloodline. Only men look at the outward appearance. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The Most High is not the one who made North Africans European looking and Sub Saharan Africans dark black people. This was done by design by the synagogue of Satan. Majority of the inhabitants in North Africa are tares. They are not descendants of the ancient people that they pushed into Sub Saharan Africa. The workers of iniquity are very selective of which of the laws and scriptures they will uphold. If the leaders of this world served the Most High, they would abide by his laws, statutes, and commandments. Instead, the synagogue of Satan void the laws of the Most High to create their own. Their laws made them not guilty in any wrongdoing against the indigenous black people. 
In addition, the laws they created give them the right to steal everything from the original people of this world. Israelites, that is why the Most High say make no covenants with them and their gods, as well as not to love the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The tares, the hybrids, the serpent seed, or whatever name you give the other species of mankind, they don't have any inheritance in the land inheritance the Most High gave to Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The other species of mankind, along with the prince of this world, control all the kingdoms of this world. How could they control all the kingdoms of this world if they are not descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth? Remember, the scripture said the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The scriptures made it clear that the prince of this world control all the kingdoms. Satan tried to give all the kingdoms of this world to the Messiah if the Messiah would bow down and worship him. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The scriptures said we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers, with the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. The people who are running this world are the wicked. Satan's children don't have any inheritance. In order to gain land, Satan's children stole land from the original inhabitants of the land. How did the superpower nation called USA became a nation? Land theft under colonization. In most of the land the colonial masters stole, they infiltrated the original people's population by planting their seed into the indigenous black population. The scripture said, while man slept, his enemy came, planted tares, and went his way. But while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. The children born from the forced union of the colonial masses and indigenous black women brought forth the recognized races of today. The indigenous black people continue to increase the population of the tares when they knowingly choose strange flesh to procreate with. I have a video called The Children of the Colonizers. Watch that video for more information on how the serpent seed increases population. There was not a land inhabited in this world where its foundation is not indigenous black people. When the children of Satan went to explore the world, they encounter black people. Every land the synagogue of Satan colonized once belonged to black people. When the Most High scattered the people during the time of Babel, the Most High scattered the original black people all over the world. These individuals are descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Once each bloodline began to increase, the progenitor of the bloodline would leave his father's house to go find land for him and his descendants. The land they would claim for themselves is the land given for an inheritance from one of the fathers, the three progenitors of the indigenous black people of today, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These are the families of the children of Japheth according to their cities and languages. When they were scattered after the tower, and they called their cities after their names and occurrences. And these are the names of all their cities according to their families, which they built in those days after the tower. And Seir, the son of Hur, son of Hivi, son of Canaan, went and found a valley opposite to Mount Paran, and he built a city there, and he and his seven sons and his household dwell there. And he called the city which he built Seir, according to his name, that is the land of Seir unto this day. These are the families of the children of Ham, according to their languages and cities, when they were scattered to their countries after the tower. The land of Canaan was given to Abraham and the Israelites because the promised land is located in Shem's territory, and it belongs to the Israelites. The Book of Jubilees revealed Ham's son Canaan stole the land. That is how the promised land is known as the land of Canaan. And Canaan saw the land of Lebanon to the river of Egypt that it was very good. And he went not into the land of his inheritance to the west that is to the sea. And he dwelt in the land of Lebanon eastward and westward from the border of Jordan and from the border of the sea. 
And Ham his father, and Cush, and Mizraim his brothers, said unto him, Thou hast settled in a land which is not thine, and which did not fall to us by lot. Do not do so, for if thou do so, thou and thou sons will fall in the land and be accursed through sedition. For by sedition ye have settled, and by sedition will thy children fall, and thou shalt be rooted out for ever. Dwell not in the dwelling of Shem, for to Shem and to his sons did it come by their lot. Cursed are thou, and cursed shalt thou be beyond all the sons of Noah, by the curse by which we bound ourselves, by an oath in the presence of the holy judge, and in the presence of Noah our father. But he did not hearken unto them, and dwell in the land of Lebanon from Hamath to the entering of Egypt, he and his sons until this day. And for this reason, that land is named Canaan. I want to make it crystal clear that the modern people living in the modern nations of today are not the ancient people nor the descendants of the original inhabitants of the land. When the terrorists say they descend from Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they are speaking lies, especially the imposters that claim our bloodline under the religion called Judaism. How did a group of terrorists known as Khazars become Israeli and Jewish? The impostors who stole the Israelite bloodline do not even call themselves by the name the Most High gave to his people. The impostors are not called after the Most High. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. You will not find Israeli, Khazars, Judaism, Jewish, and Jew in the original scriptures written by the prophets of old. I cringe every time I hear our people call themselves Jew. Israelites, I don't care who told you that you were a Jew. I'm going to tell you, you're not a Jew. If you're going to serve the Most High, serve him in the spirit and in truth. Let the imposters call themselves Jew, Jewish, and practice Judaism. We don't want to be mistaken for them, especially when the wrath of the people come upon them for the manipulation of the word of the Most High. They will say, well, we are not the real Jew and blame you like they always do. Let them reap from what they sow. Don't join them. Let us talk about how the tares that claim our bloodline became us in the beast system. The Israelites and the indigenous black people have a history of disobeying the Most High. The Israelites whom the Most High chose for himself as a people have a long history of idol worship. Until this day, Israelites in the awakening and in religion are deep into idol worship. The Most High said his people would serve other gods. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Due to the sin of idolatry, the Most High removed his people from his presence. The promised land was given to the Israelites via a covenant. Once the Israelites sinned, the Most High removed his people from his presence and their land. The northern kingdom of Israel was carried away from their land by the king of Assyria. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. The book of Kings revealed that the Most High was very angry with his people. The Israelites was not faithful to the Most High. They followed after the heathens. They worshiped the gods of the heathens. The Israelites did not keep the statutes and commandments of the Most High. Due to their abominations, the Most High sent his people into captivity. The Israelites were carried away by the king of Assyria, except the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah was the only tribe that didn't go into captivity when the Most High sent the Assyrian king against his people. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made the molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. 
There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Israelites, you just heard in the scriptures, none of the tribes was left after the Assyrian captivity except the tribe of Judah only. The scriptures did not say the southern kingdom of Judah remained, which the southern kingdom of Judah include Benjamin and a remnant of the Levites. The scriptures specifically said the tribe of Judah was the only tribe that remained after the Assyrian captivity. When the tribe of Judah failed to keep the commandments of the Most High, the Most High rejected all of his people and gave his people into the hands of their enemies until the Israelites were removed from his presence. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. The heathens didn't steal the Israelite land from them. Our people sin a great sin, the sin of idolatry, and the Most High removed them from his presence. It was the Most High that allowed the heathen nations to carry his people captive. It was the Most High that allowed his people to be dispersed into all the nations. The Most High used the heathen nations to discipline his people. The Israelites are not innocent. When our ancestors refused to listen to the Most High and the prophets, the Most High sent the heathens against them. If the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets, notwithstanding they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. The northern kingdom of Israel did not stay in the land the king of Assyria placed them. The Israelites decided that they would go somewhere else to worship the Most High in peace. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osi, the king, whom Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt. The scriptures made it clear that the Israelites went into captivity. They are no longer in their land. How did the tares whom the world accepted as the chosen people became us? The book of Kings said, when the Assyrian king displaced the Israelites, the king of Assyria brought heathens from Babylon and other cities to dwell in the land that belonged to the Israelites. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and from Cathar, and from Avar, and from Hamath, and from Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. The nations, the scriptures name, live in the land that belonged to our people. The original Israelites were removed from their land and carried away. Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. The heathens living in the Israelite territories didn't know how to live on the land. They didn't fear the Most High. The heathens began to worship their idols in the Israelite territories. The Most High sent lions to destroy the heathens. The people the king of Assyria placed in the land that belonged to the Israelites complained to the king of Assyria, saying they do not know how to serve the God that live on the land that belongs to the Israelites. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria, know not the manner of the God of the land. 
Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the man of the God of the land. The king of Assyria command that they bring a priest from the Israelite community to teach the heathens that dwell in their land about the Most High. Like in the indigenous black people's fashion, they taught their enemies how to fear and serve the Most High. They taught the enemy their culture. The same statutes and commandments the Israelites and indigenous black people refused to obey, they taught the heathens how to observe it. Our ancestors were without excuse. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. The indigenous black people continue to teach their enemies about their culture until this day. Then they get angry when the heathens claim our culture for themselves. Israelites, as you heard in the scriptures, an Israelite priest taught the heathens who live in the land that belongs to our people the statutes of the Most High. The heathens began to fear the Most High and serve other gods as well. The scriptures said these heathens live in our land until this day. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers. So do they unto this day. Israelites, as you heard, the heathens have taken over our land and dwell in our land until this day. The Israelites taught the heathens the statutes and commandments of the Most High. The heathens retain our customs so that they could live on the land and not die. The heathens also serve their idols. The religion Judaism started with our own people teaching the Khazars our customs, just like we heard in the Book of Kings. The heathens combined their pagan practices with the statutes learned from our people to form the religion we know today called Judaism. The Israelites were exiled and the heathens live in their land. After several generations, the heathens are now saying they are the descendants of the Israelites. I hope the Most High open your eyes to see how the synagogue of Satan operate. I hope the Most High opened the eyes of his people to show them not only their transgressions, but how the tares who believe they are descendants of the foundational people, but are not. The colonial masters in the generation of slavery were repeating the behavior pattern of their ancestors. They remove people from their lands and dwell in their land and assume the people's identity and culture. The word of the Most High revealed this. Let the word of the Most High be true and every man a liar. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, the heathens, the tares, the serpent seed, the synagogue of Satan, the other species of mankind, or whatever name you call these people, they all know who they are. The scriptures say they conspired against you. The tares don't want to lose their possessions. Therefore, they are hanging on to the lie that they are the descendants of the original people of the land they live on. If they were descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, there wouldn't be confusion surrounding their identity today. The indigenous people of this world call their land after their names. Which of Japheth's sons or grandsons is called France, Germany, Switzerland, or Italy? Someone please tell me which of Ham's sons is called Egypt, Iraq, Iran, and the many other modern names of the nations today. The Satans pushed the original people out of their land and changed the name of the region to cause confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Our ancestors had the time to teach the heathens, but not their own. No wonder the scripture said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Israelites, the sooner you learn this truth, you will begin to correctly identify the people that live around you. The scripture said, you live in the land of your enemies. It's about time you believe the most high. 
Israelites, you've been homeless for a long time. These people in your land are imposters. They are trying to erase you. The beast culture bombards your minds with ads, television shows, movies, commercials, and social media to mingle your seed with strange flesh. The children born from your abominable union is assigned your identity in the beast system. As for you, the original people made in the image of the Most High, your enemies want to erase you. The Satans and the wicked despise the image of the Most High. Unfortunately, a lot of Israelites and indigenous black people are helping their enemies erase themselves because they too despise the image of the Most High. Israelites, don't let what you can see deceive you. You were removed from your land and dispersed because of your iniquities. Many Israelites continue to follow after the heathens. Israelites, instead of teaching the heathens how to serve the Most High, why don't you teach your children and self how to serve the Most High? The Most High wants to save his people. The question is, do the people of the Most High want to be saved? He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear.